Why the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K? Let's roll. <laughs> Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. Jesus, that's a long name, so I'm just going to call it the Pocket 6K from now on. I know there's been a lot of videos already out there about the Pocket 4K and some about the Pocket 6K, talking about how cool it is and this and that. I personally got the Pocket 4K about two weeks ago, finally after waiting on the wait list for so long. And literally five days into it, I had to return it because the 6K came out. So, you know, obviously I wanted the better version. And yeah, I know there's a lot of people out there who are still talking about, oh, no, no, what if you use the 4K with the Metabone? No, I have the Metabones. Trust me, it's not the same thing. So, one of the first things I want to talk about with that is bit depth. That's, that's something I think that a lot of people have skipped over that, uh, that they're not talking about. See, when it comes to bit depth, if you compare this camera to the same price bracket with like Sony's, your Panasonic's, or the or Canon's for that matter, other than Panasonic, which I think does about 10 bit 420, maybe 422 externally, uh, the Sony's, and not 100% about the Canon's, but Sony's definitely are 8 bit 420's. Look, I think um, the best way for me to explain bit depth is the human eye sees, I think, about 10 million colors. 8-bit uh, does 16.7 million colors, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's using the right colors. Uh, that, that's the reason. Uh, there's a lot of banding, you know, when you're looking at skies and, like, you know, sunsets and stuff, and the colors go from orange, red, and yellow, and just bouncing all over the place. Um, when you go from 8-bit to 10-bit, you make the jump to over 1 billion colors. And when you make the jump from 10 bit to 12, it, I, I think, uh, how many? I think it's over 67 billion colors? I'm not sure, but it, it's a lot more. Point being is, that's what makes the difference between why things look more filmic and not. This is why like, you know, when, when it comes to like pushing colors in, in post, and when you color grading, not correct, just color grading, you don't get to get like all those crazy cool things done. The only way to do that is if you have enough bit depth uh, to, to make that happen. Another thing I want to talk about is Blackmagic RAW or B-RAW, BRA, whatever the hell you want to call it. And uh, the first time I used that was about six months ago at the shoot I had on an Orson Mini Pro. And I freaking love this codec. Uh, I usually was using it at... Uh, Q5, which is quantitative five. It's like about quantization. Quantiz. I don't know. Like quantization. No. Quant. I don't know how you say. It, but either way, it's it's like it goes Q0, Q5, or there's like three to one to twelve to one. Always go with Q instead of like three to one or twelve to one. Reason for that is, um, if it's three to one, it's always going to be three to one, no matter what. But if it's on quant, the Q thing, the fucking Q thing. Uh, what it's going to do is, if there's more detail in the shot, it will increase the file rate to adjust for that. So, that's a good tip. Um, so, yeah, so I used that, and I love the footage that came out of it. It was very easy to color grade and everything. And I know there's a lot of people complaining about that. Oh, no, the ProRes is not as high. And like, what, what? I'm sorry, why the fuck is anyone using ProRes? Look, if you're doing professional work, and th that's what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the professionals who are doing real fucking shit. You need raw. I mean, at least I do. I, I like. I don't want like the phone shit in. Like, I don't want to, you know, just put half my fucking heart into something and just use ProRes or like Cinelike or Log. If I have raw, why the fuck would I not use that? One of the things that was missing with the Pocket 4K was anamorphic mode, which the Pocket 6K does have. Which basically means you can have a 4x3 sensor so you can use actual, you know, two times anamorphic lenses, which is phenomenal. And you have enough resolution to, to you know, to make that shit work. Another thing I want to talk about is like resolution wise, 6K is I think the perfect resolution because look, I'm publishing like even on YouTube right now in 4K, but 
I love to have a little bit of room just in case I want to crop or zoom or reframe my shots and things like that. And 6K just gives me, you know, that little bit extra to do that. I'm not saying you got to publish in 6K. Look, even cinemas right now, there's very few that are actually projecting in 4K. So you're good even with HD, but 6K is the perfect amount. And it just works. When I look at this camera, I'm not trying to compare it to like DSLRs or hybrids because it's it's way above those. Um, the way I look at it is, I can get for 2,400 bucks a camera that can do 6K amazing quality raw, as opposed to spending like 30 grand on a Red or 40 grand on an Alexa, and that's pretty amazing, you know. So if, if that is what your goal is, because that's what my goal is, to be eventually making feature films or like big movies like that, why is this not focused on me? You know, like my goal is to eventually be making feature films, like big budget, crazy fucking feature films. So I think this is the best camera for me to do that with, you know. Uh, like I can literally shoot a feature film on this camera and you know what, hopefully, I will one day. Right, so another thing. Shh, shh. So another thing I wanted to talk about was um so why did why does the bit depth matter? Why does all this extra color matter? Well, it matters if 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 you're trying to do a professional job and like for example me, I love to color grade and I have to color grade, you know, just to make my footage look all that awesome. And the in order to do that, if you have that bit depth, it makes a big fucking difference. So, I mean, I'll, I'll show you guys a, a few examples of some of the footage that I've taken from the Black Magic website. Um, uh, there, there's this footage of this wedding and this and that. And the thing is, you can push these colors like anything. And that, I mean, dude, I, I can't even explain to you how much of a big difference that makes. You know, a lot of people were like uh, saying that, oh, you know, if you still have the Pocket 4K with the Micro Four Thirds sensor and you put a Metabone Speed Booster on, which I had done, by the way, uh, you still get a wider field of view as opposed to the Super 35 that the Pocket 6K had. Yes, that's true. But you're missing the fucking point. It's not about having a wilder, a wilder. It's not about having a wider field of view. That's, that's, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for more of that shallower depth of view. I'm looking for the fact that I can put on, uh, you know, cinema glass. And yes, it's EF, but you can mount P on lenses. You know, it's kind of fucking adapter. That shit works. Um, and I would rather have a bigger sensor with bigger pixels so that the image is cleaner, you know. Uh, as opposed to having a tiny sensor with the magnifying of the meta bones to get like the wider field of view. It's not about wide, wider field of view. Just get a wider lens. If, uh, wider lens. Just get a wider lens if that's what you're after. But I think it's more important to just, you know, because this is the right size. Super 35, I know it's not a standard size. Every Super 35 sensor is a bit different. But uh, that is the right size to go with because. You know, I mean, even if you want to use like Coke Anamorphics or RE Master Primes or whatever, you can, you know, and that's, that's, that's the beauty of it. Look, let me talk about a couple of other things that I'm sure y'all already know about. Like this camera has dual native ISO, so it's amazing in low light. It's not like Sony amazing, but then again, do you really want your shit to look like video? I think most people, even when they're doing YouTube and stuff, they follow certain protocols. That, like, for example, everyone's like either on a Sony or a Canon. Everyone's using the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8. That's just like the standard on YouTube, and I fucking hate it. Cause you know, by the end of the day, I don't just want to be another face in the crowd. Gonna hear? Oh, that's the Bon Jovi song. So, uh, but you understand what I'm saying, right? It's like. Why do that? You you want to do something different. You want to do something that makes you stand out. And that's why I picked up the Super Talk Mars, but that's another video. I picked up a CFast card. I'm going to pick up a second one as well. But you can use the Samsung T5s, the wide drives, like USB-C, which is, I mean, come on. You have amazing options for storage, which is great. Let me talk a little bit about some of the negatives that most people bring up when they talk about the Pocket 4K or 6K and this and that. 
Uh, I think the biggest one they say is dynamic range. Oh shit, it doesn't have enough dynamic range. But you know, I mean, I, I can't use 13 steps dynamic range. I, shut the fuck up, man. What the fuck is wrong with you? Seriously, look, 13 stops of dynamic range is plenty if you know what the fuck you're doing. Because, look, sure, if I stand by my window right now, or it's, it's nighttime, but like in the daytime, I stand by my window. Uh, sure, I need to figure that shit out. Either I need to add, do additive lighting, like a lot of fucking lights coming on me indoors, or I put like a gel or something on the window. And that's that's just, that's even if you're shooting film, that's what you have to do. Sure, the biggest difference, look, between film and digital is when things get overexposed in film, they bloom. But in digital, they blow out. That's why it looks so different. I'll research this a little more because I know there's more to it, but yeah, I'll get back to you on that. But the point is that there's ways around the dynamic range. And people will you know, talking, oh, but you know, my Sony has been, blah, 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 blah. Listen, it's still 8-bit. So you take all this dynamic range, you put it in a log, which makes it this much. Then you put it in 8-bit, that makes it this much. Okay? Raw stays this, stays this, fucking stays this. I'm sorry. Listen, I know I, I, I really said that I would not swear as much as I am when I started making these movies with these uh, YouTube thingies because everyone's like, oh, you, you know, like every, t- every time you look at these, you know, videos of people saying how, how to start a YouTube channel, like, oh, you know, you, you can't swear, you can't talk this way, you have to be polite. And this, look, I get that, but this is just how I fucking talk. So, just deal with it. Let me talk about slow mo for a second. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have like that much high frame rate for slow mo and this and that. Look, um, I, what are you shooting exactly? Like, are you, are you do, like, are you one of those people who's going to a park and shooting ducks, going, hey, meh. If, if that's your scene, fine, go, go with the Sony or a Canon and just call it a day. I'm not. My goal is to make feature films or narrative movies, you know, even shorts. I want them to be narrative and things like that. And I really haven't seen a single freaking movie in my life where you needed 120 FPS or 240 FPS. Yes, sometimes you have shows like, for example, in Wolf for Wall Street when Jonah Hill is going, and they had, but that's a phantom flex. That's different. That's a thousand frames per second. If you need slow mo, you get a specific camera for that shit. Don't don't tell me that. Oh no, you need slow mo. Slow mo is overrated. I'm gonna do a video about that, by the way. And personally, I blame Philip Bloom for the slow mo bullshit that most YouTubers do. Another thing people talk about is, uh, oh, it doesn't have autofocus. Yeah. Why should it? There's no um, film camera that does have that. that. That just doesn't exist. And it shouldn't. Because if you are shooting a narrative or like a proper thing, or even if you're shooting like a wedding or whatever the fuck, you can't pull focus. If you don't know how to pull focus, what the fuck are you doing? Sure, if I was doing documentaries or like run and gun kind of stuff like that, I'll get a, you know, I'll get, I'll get like a, either a Fuji XC3 or a Canon C200. But, I mean, that, that's because it serves that purpose. But if you're just trying to do something like this, like you're trying to make movies, well, I don't know what you need autofocus for. And, and another thing, learn to use manual lenses. Even if you, even if you don't have, like, um, even if you have an autofocus camera, try to focus manually. Trust me, it'll make you a better filmmaker because then you will be thinking about things like rack focus and, you know, things like that. It, it'll make you a better filmmaker. Trust me. Battery life is another thing a lot of people are pissed about. Like, oh no, it's only about 35 minutes to 45 minutes. Well, I had the Pocket 4K and uh, even with the generic battery that came with it, uh, it lasted about 45 minutes. Um, and then again, by the way, I'm not one of those people who goes, uh, like, if I'm on a shoot, I just turn the camera on, I just leave it on. I 
turn it on when I'm ready to shoot, and I turn it right off. So you're saving battery. And look, you can get Wasabi Power batteries, like cheap ass ones, on Amazon for like 10 bucks. So like for 100, you can get like 10 batteries, which I did. And if you need better solutions, get a female solution. And th 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 there's a lot you can do. Battery is not an issue that you should be concerned about when it comes to this camera. And as far as the size goes, you're like, oh, well, it's a little wider. You know, it's a little wider than the typical DSLR and everything. Dude, are you fucking kidding me? Have you seen what cinema cameras are look like and how much they weigh? Look, I have shot with an Orson Mini Pro, I've shot with an Alexa, I've shot with a fucking red, a bunch of reds and all. And I'll tell you one thing, it gets tiring for anybody when you have these big rigs on your shoulder and you're like, ow, or you're trying to use them on a fucking gimbal, it gets hard. It does, okay? So don't compare this to DSLRs, compare this to cinema cameras where you're not you know, it's, it's this whole tiny, you can put this on like a, on like one of those uh, Zeon cranes or a Ronin, although I don't like the Ronin, I think Zeon crane, yeah, yeah, you can put it on that and still do these amazing 6K cinematic shot, that's, that's amazing, you know, for me at least, because I remember this one time I was uh, doing the shoot and I had a Orson Mini Pro, why, why don't follow me, I remember this one time I was doing the shoot and, uh, uh, I wanted to do these moving shots, and but I had the Ultra, Ultra Mini Pro, and uh, I got the steady cam rig, except it was so heavy that I was just like, oh man, fuck it, I, I can't, I can't even bother, I, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. I mean, sure, if it was like, yeah, I mean, I'm skinny and shit, so yeah, that, that plays into it, but why would you want to put yourself through that? Why, 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 you know, it's just... This is a 6K pocket, well, not, not pocket, but you know, it's a tiny camera that you can shoot a feature film on. What more do you fucking want? Never in the history of cameras has there ever been a camera below $3,000 which you can shoot a feature on and project it on a big fucking screen in a cinema and it'll look just as good so long as you know what you're doing. Because, look, by the end of the day, camera's one thing, but lighting and sound is what matters the most when it comes to making movies. That's what it is. So, I mean, look, that's, that's what I got to say about the camera. And hopefully, um, I should be getting the Pocket 6K in in a couple of days. And as soon as I do, uh, I'll make a few, you know, test videos and things like that. I actually have this little thing planned. Um, for the aperture like this like this location thingy uh yeah so that's what i'm gonna do and hopefully you know it works out uh all right guys so um i hope some of this information at least was useful to at least somebody out there um because this is my first ever like talking to the camera youtube video thingy and it it's it was a bit daunting very honestly um but i hope that i could get better at it and if you guys have any comments or any suggestions please let me know i'm gonna try to do my best and try to help out whoever i can and yeah cool thank you okay then 